So this Pasha passage. Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing The Farm Journal Christmas Idea Book, Three New Books in One, A Holiday Cookbook, Handcrafted Gifts, and Festive Decorations. This book was published in 1972 and I've had it for quite a few years, but it wasn't part of my cookbook collection. I actually didn't even really notice that there was a cookbook in here. I, I kept this with like my sewing and craft books. When I was looking for Christmas cookbooks, recipes to put on my channel for this holiday season, I came across this and I was like, perfect. I believe Farm Journal is still around today. It's a magazine that provides agricultural information to farmers. They also seem to have some content for farm families in general. So recipes, decor, handmade gifts, <laughs> that kind of thing. There's a whole introduction that says make Christmas meaningful. A rich source of inspiration for thoughtful ways to observe this holiday has been the farm families of America. For in their homes and communities, it has been traditional to put yourself into Christmas. There, celebrating Christmas means getting involved in it with flour on your nose and paint in your hair, <laughs> scarcely finishing one project before launching into the next. Being too busy is half the fun. I've probably had flour on my nose though. <laughs> Let's who hasn't? And busy farm homemakers know the value of planning ahead to make the season less hectic. In November, they start filling the freezer with make-ahead goodies and food gifts. The catch-all drawer yields odds and ends the children turn into fabulous decorations for the house. I do know about a catch-all drawer. My family had one. I can't really recall any odds and ends that came from that drawer to make holiday decorations, but maybe their catch-all drawer is a little bit better than mine. Also, we called it a junk drawer. We didn't call it a catch-all drawer. <laughs> There's a whole section of desserts that say ready and waiting in the freezer. First off, beautiful photo. Like, look at those. I want those. So on this page, we've got velvety lime squares, vanilla almond crunch, and raspberry swirl. And it gives some really helpful advice on how to store them, all of that. Be sure to wrap these snugly with foil to seal in their delicate flavor and to prevent freezer burn. There's another one in here that I just, I thought was genius snack packs in the freezer. So what we have here are kind of like small trays of snack foods or d'oeuvres. I'm assuming they're all baked at the same temperature because these are all like wrapped and frozen. So you can just pull out the whole tray and put it in the oven if you need something. I love that idea. I think that is great. And of course, maybe back in 1972, they didn't have quite the variety of frozen snacks and appetizers that you can get now. So this was kind of the thing, but I would love to do this. Here's a color photo of the snacks themselves right here. So we have bean tarts. <laughs> pizza franks, chicken turnovers, deviled ham twists. There's also tuna toppers and then cheese and beef potpourri. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know potpourri has like a meaning of variety, but also I think of like the wood chips and dried flowers that you would have in a basket in the 80s and early 90s. I'm just thinking of like a basket of meat and cheese. Your guests and family will appreciate this tasty change from the usual sweet holiday fare. And you'll know that snackers are getting needed protein. <laughs> I just like that there's like a concern for the right amount of protein in someone's diet. And the, the answer is bean tarts. <laughs> so many cookies in here too. And look at these trees. I love these. And it's just such a fun way to display cookies. I would a thousand percent knock these over, but it's a nice thought. Oh yeah, we've got our like whole festive feast here. They have a couple of different options. So we've got this beautiful spread for Christmas. And then there's also, I mean, this could be part of the same spread if you have a big family, because this one's ham and oh yes, you all, look at that jello mold, crowned in green olives. <laughs> Make ahead fruited salads. I've definitely had something like this. I almost want to say it was very similar to the frozen cranberry salad I made, but you freeze them in little muffin cups and then you unmold them. Lots and lots of desserts, plenty of cookies. There's an entire page of cranberry recipes. Ooh, cute, cookies in a hurry. So these are some fast cookie recipes. I love these tiered trays. I do have one, I don't get to use it as often as I would like, especially in the last two years for reasons. There's a chapter called Children's Corner. So we've got a little girl making some cookies. Just a lot of fun recipes in here. 
Again, I haven't tried any of these because this was not a cookbook to me. And I, I mean, it is now. Oh, look at this. Yeastos and pastries. That's such a pretty photo. This sounds like I'm a, such a weirdo. I kind of would love to, I don't want to ruin the book, but I would love to like take this and just frame it and display it for Christmas. Oh, look at this. What are you? I think this is a fruitcake of some kind. This round cake. Okay, so it's it's a tiny fruitcake. It's called Golden Miniatures. Yeah, okay, so this is something that you would save your soup cans for. You know, clean out the soup cans, grease them really well, and then you bake this in the oven in the soup can. And that must be a, de a decorated soup can in the background, and you can give this as a gift. We've moved into festive Christmas decorations, so I think it's time to talk about the recipe I'm going to be making today. Today I'm going to be preparing white Christmas pie. That, my friends, is a white Christmas pie, and look how pretty it is. And look, it's our old friend candied fruit. I think I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I really wanted more recipes to use that candy fruit in. And then I came across this and I was like, gosh, that's so pretty. It does take quite a few steps. I was just looking at this recipe before I started filming and I was like, oh, I'm getting into a lot here. You do have to refrigerate it overnight. Since it's gonna be like a two day affair, I think it's time to get started. All right, white Christmas pie. I mentioned that there are multiple components to this recipe and each one has its own set of steps. So instead of listing out all of the ingredients right now, I'm just gonna put them in the description down below. Soften gelatin in cold water. One envelope plus one teaspoon. Do envelopes of gelatin come in different sizes? <laughs> I sure hope not. One envelope plus one teaspoon. So I'm gonna soften that in one quarter cup of cold water. So we set that aside and move on. Combine one quarter cup of sugar, flour, and salt in a saucepan. So we have our sugar and salt. Flour, turn it on low and gradually add the milk. And it just says to stir that until thickened. Yes, I grabbed the tiniest possible spatula. <laughs> It was within reach. Yeah, that's hot. I should put, I should grab a longer <laughs> handled spatula. Don't look to me for kitchen safety. It feels like it's getting thicker. So once it gets thickened and smooth, I'm supposed to remove it from the heat and then stir in the gelatin. It's gelatin, it's your time to shine. Oh boy, okay. Stir in gelatin until melted. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Spoke too soon. Remove from heat, stir in gelatin until melted, and then chill until starts to set. So I'm gonna transfer this to a bowl, stick it in the fridge. The next step is to beat one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream with a quarter cup of sugar. Basically, we are making sweetened whipped cream right now. If you've watched a couple of my other videos, you've seen me do this before. I just like to keep everything very cold. Metal bowl in the fridge for a few minutes. Beaters in the fridge. There we go. Ta-da! I'm gonna pop this in the fridge until I'm ready for the next step. I'm gonna dirty a lot of mixing bowls in this one. So I let this first part of the mixture chill for like 25 to 30 minutes until it was just starting to set. Beat gelatin mixture until smooth. Stir in vanilla, almond, and candied fruit. I like the taste of candied fruit. I love the way it looks. So we have a teaspoon of vanilla extract, quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract also going in. Now I have to add the candy fruit, which unfortunately looks like this. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I was supposed to toss this in some powdered sugar and I did it way too far in advance. So now it's, it's a little stuck together. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna put it in here and see how that goes. <laughs> it's very stuck. <laughs> so I guess the moral of the story, don't prepare too far in advance for this pie. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> have to do something about this. That's what that looks like. Fold in whipped cream and one cup of flaked coconut. I feel like I need a bigger bowl. <laughs> bowl number three. <laughs> it's kind of a weird pinky. It kind of matches my skin tone. 
So we're going to fold in our whipped cream. All right, and we'll just put our one cup of flaked coconut in there too. Coconut. Kind of doesn't seem like these things want to work together right now. <laughs> just a little sampling of what it looks like at the moment. So far, theirs is prettier. In the ingredients list, it says you need one pre-baked nine inch pie shell. But after you fold all of this in, it doesn't say to pour it into the pie shell. I see a photo of it, so I know it goes in here. It's just funny to me that they forgot to say that. Also, please excuse my pie shell. <laughs> I didn't float the edge because this is store-bought pie dough and it didn't have any like overlap or like overhang. I really wanted to get one of those deep dish like pre-baked, completely pre-baked pie crusts. I can't find them anywhere. Everybody's making pies, I guess. Well, I mean, it's filling it nicely, so I think I'm at the right like consistency. Oh, I think their pie dish is a little bit more shallow than mine, so that's probably why theirs is a little higher. And it says to garnish with more coconut. So that's what I have here. Chill until firmly set overnight is best. So we're going to give this a little nap in the fridge, but here's what it looks like right now. We're going to pop this in the fridge and I will see you tomorrow. It's definitely not quite as tall. Also my candied fruit kind of bled, so there's like streaks of red in there. It's not super appealing. <laughs> Maybe I just needed to toss the candied fruit in a little bit more powdered sugar. But I'm gonna cut into this and see what it looks like. What is calling to me here? I'm just gonna do right down the center. So I have to make this nice because I still need to take a thumbnail. I'm just gonna do, it's a six to eight serving, so let's cut this for eight. Whoops. Please come out nicely. <laughs> Hello. Having some difficulty. Okay, I think we got it. Yeah, it's definitely not quite as attractive as it was in the book. Maybe I need to practice with the candied fruit. Maybe the fruit I used had a little bit too much syrup on it. I don't know. It's a good first attempt, at least looks wise, but now we have to find out how it tastes. Ooh, it's very spongy. It smells like pie. It smells a little like coconut cream pie. It tastes an awful lot like coconut cream pie, actually. Yeah, I think I just made a coconut cream pie. <laughs> I'm trying to decide about that candied fruit. I don't know if you can do this, but I think I would maybe cut back to the glacé cherries and pineapple. I don't know if they make that mix or if you can kind of make that mix yourself. I'm not sure that the citrus peel goes really well with this. And I think you could get the same effect color-wise if you went with like red and green cherries. So I might do that, but again, I think this was a really good first attempt. I've wanted to try this, this pie because I thought it was so pretty. I think this would be a really nice change of pace as far as desserts go during the holiday season. It's a little bit lighter and fluffier. It's not super, super heavy. Not that I don't like those kinds of desserts too. It's good. It's a nice surprise for sure. Thank you so much if you come back and watch my videos week after week. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you if you are a first time viewer. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel and maybe consider subscribing. I post content similar to this just about every week. If you'd like to see what else I'm up to, you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is underscore cooking the books underscore. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.